I think when we did that, right? Mm. I was there in person to see how paper process was happening, mm. and subsequently I was there to see how our system had changed the way they were working, huh. and that was very very impactful actually. Come to Varaki GFS and being there and seeing the kind of you know people we were with and all of it, I would now say adapt, mm. simplify, and transform. They <laughs> are the three words that adapt, I mean. simplify, and transform. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi there, welcome to this edition of Dwara Tech Talks. In this edition, we have with us Vidya Sambasivam, a seasoned technology leader with over 28 years of experience working with numerous MNCs and financial institutions. In her illustrious career, she has been instrumental in rolling out various technology-related products that has made transformation not only to the companies she's worked with but also to people in real life. Today, it is an absolute pleasure to have us here with us. Hi, Vidya. Thank you for taking the time to be with us for Dwara Tech Talks. Um, to start with, I think it would be right for me to ask: three decades. That is quite some time, especially uh, considering uh, you know. Uh, I I don't come across a lot of women who are uh, in the role of CTOs or CIOs, so that is quite inspiring. Can you can you tell us a little bit more insights as to how it started with computer science, how your love for computer science started, and uh, how you've been your journey here as uh, CTO CIO? Could you please give us a little bit more detail? Okay. Uh, Actually, Anvita, uh, the way I started, I think uh, I had options to do both uh, engineering and medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, when I finished my twelfth, and of course, um, since I got computer science and College of Engineering gave me, um, I said, let me go there. I think that's mm -hmm. how it started. So, uh. I mean, I don't want to say that I was, you know, right from a very young age, <laughs> I was, a, you know, very enthused by tech. Mm -hmm. But once I got, in, I think I got hooked. Mm -hmm. I would say to this day I'm hooked on it. <laughs> okay, uh, the for me the you know I look back it's been a long journey. Okay, mm. uh, the four years I, in college I was really motivated. I wanted to do very well tech. I was very very mm. enthusiastic about it. I got into Vipro right from college. Mm. After that you know I got married maybe within a couple of years after college or, mm. or after uh, you know I joined Wipro mm. and then my early career was a little bit of ups and down because mm. I had my children so I quit uh, when my son was born I quit mm. and then I went back to work then my daughter was born uh. then again I quit and stayed that uh, for a couple of years mm. uh, and but one thing which i did all through was to stay in touch and i mm. think some of it comes from uh, you know i do have to give the credit to my husband mm. uh, he always used to motivate me to stay in touch with tech he also comes from it mm. right and so i i think i continued to stay in touch mm. but i i was looking for an opportunity to get back to full time is mm. how i would see this mm. as now the minute you know once my kids went into school and my daughter also got into school i actually got into a full time kind of a job mm. in between i was doing some level of freelancing kept up with certifications mm. and mm. things like that but when when i joined full time back mm. i was on a roll right and mm. i i actually got into the right place at the right time okay um, you know mm. i joined indus it's currently called ibix cash uh, mm -hmm. fintech um and you know i had the opportunity to work on some very large projects mm. and i could make a difference okay mm. and that was actually the starting point for me and i almost had a steep career growth from that point of time right so i mm. think that's how it has been for me there are times in between i mean i do have to say this right when when those breaks were there mm. um i would actually think back and say that i was so interested to go back time into tech but i was not able to was something that used to bother me a lot mm. but i think looking back i realized that you know when i got the opportunity i was able to take it up and move on right so i think huh. uh, that's that's at least been my journey <laughs> what i'm curious about is uh, 30 years ago 
uh, women in tech is 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 quite a it's it's quite unheard of right even now uh, you know senior positions of women in tech is is still looked as uh, oh wow oh someone is uh, someone has truly been transformational etc so in your initial career uh, how did it feel to be um, one of those few women who were interested in tech what were your personal challenges that you also went through in between basically in uh, you know when i moved into it i think uh, i while there were many people around mm. you had to put in that extra effort mm. the requirements of family life is far more for women and i mean there is no True. going back on that it was part of any kind of support <laughs> you get okay and for me i think the early days when the kids were growing up i do have to say that i had support from my husband from my in laws from my parents also okay mm. uh, people were stepping in to help me mm. uh, but at the same time you really had to have a lot of energy to do things okay i've traveled all over with mm. the kids and so you will have to be on your toes all the time mm. all the ground both at home and in the <laughs> multitask work. yes multitask all the time mm. and i think uh, that's been the way uh, for me mm. as well okay um, but i say this a lot of times and uh, you know and maybe i will tell the story here as well mm. um okay a lot of things that for and particularly for women i think because you bring in a lot of emotional intelligence into it mm. it helps handle pressure and Correct. i think that's helped me a lot i mm. normally tell the story um i was uh, you know in in one major a uh, call where there was major escalation and mm. you know we were discussing we didn't know how to handle and all mm. of it and my daughter was very young i think she must have been around 4 4 years mm. or something she calls and normally if i cut the call they all don't call back because mm. they know i will call back but then she kept calling again and again so i had to pick the call told the team let me just check mm. and she says no no i lost some pencil or, or something <laughs> in school and she's crying and all that and i just you know handle her went back to the yeah. discussion and i just told them i realized that you know perspectives matter right for yeah. her at that age that's such that's a such big a problem, big deal right mm. right now if this problem is very big to us mm. let's step away and handle this a little better <laughs> and i i kind of use this because actually mm. this is a way to deal with problems right step back look at it it changes for me it's a big problem for another person it is not absolutely okay? true. so i think those are the ones that i would say has been the way for me to uh, move ahead mm. um, and of course um, my interpersonal skills have also helped over a period to be able to mm. being a mother being uh, you know on top of everything else i think you know has actually helped in a way that you wouldn't i mean when you're looking uh, ba- back at the situations i think it has actually you know added value of sorts interesting perspective uh, with you so uh, see I-, i hear a lot of instances where you're mentioning about how you started realizing impact in what you do um in it sec- segment one of the things few things that is quite uh, difficult to measure is the kind of end impact that that uh, your solution has come about C- could you give me an example or an instance where you first first felt that impact the first gush of oh this is what the work that i do has made a difference uh, well, is there any instance like that actually uh, you know some of my early um uh, projects uh, uh, actually when you know i joined in nas uh, i had worked for one of the large uh, fortune 100 uh, kind of a mm-hmm. company um and uh, we were trying to automate their uh, digital lending processes mm-hmm. now um i think when we did that right mm-hmm. i was there in person to see how paper process was happening mm-hmm. and subsequently i was there to see how our system had changed the way they were working huh. and that was very very impactful actually so i i think mm. that was at least the starting point for me in terms of being in fintech mm. you know digitizing some paper process mm. so and and this is something 25 years back i'm talking about 2001 wow okay? <laughs> so that was that was that was that was transformational so okay so currently in your uh, uh, role as chief information officer for dwara kgfs how would you describe uh, kgfs as being different or more like a uh, more like an innovative 
leader in terms of what they're offering to uh, the end customer and uh, what's the impact that you see which is different from what is not there in the market? See, I think um, see, KGFS has been around for so many years now mm. and the, the base principle of not just providing lending services to the mm. customer but an you know, wholesome financial well-being services to the customer mm. being the ethos of the company, mm. I think is a big uh, differentiating factor for mm. us, okay? We, at least, uh, you know, we are we are not saying that we will only give loans to customers, right? Mm. Or, or, or insurance products to our customers. Mm. We want to say that we will support you in your financial well-being mm -hmm. and we can be a counsellor for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, that's the, a principle, I think, is a differentiator for uh, KGFS. Mm. From a technology standpoint, what I also mm. see is mm. most of the NBFCs have different, uh, you know, uh, systems in place already. Mm. Okay, but it's also important that you invest in the right systems at the right points in time. Okay, mm. um, for example, we have invested in. Um, a CRM which will allow us to engage with the customer mm -hmm. okay um, oh, when I say that there is a you know a set of people who work in a call center who are able to do calling and all of mm -hmm. it and we are able to engage with the customers through that okay mm -hmm. so there is a system of engagement that we have you know been ahead of for the size that we are right mm -hmm. we have been ahead of in our thinking and we have been able to give an omni channel uh, mm -hmm. experience to our customers we have also got into um, I, I, I would uh, I would say that invested much early on data insights for us. Okay. What I mean by this is mm. um, in in lot of uh, places it is very very important that you use data to drive insights and actions for everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And I think early on uh, uh, KGFS has invested in it, and that's that's also been a big difference. That has made a differentiator. Yes. Okay. So if I could ask you this question, what are the three? Uh, uh, three words you would uh, kind of describe your technology philosophy into. Yeah, maybe, you know, in early days, I would have said, innovate, secure and scale, mm. the, you know, are mm. the three months. But given, you know, having come to Vara KGFS and being there and seeing the kind of, you know, people we work with and all of it, I would now say adapt, mm. simplify and transform. They are the three words that adapt, simplify, and transform. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Tech has to be simplified so that even the last person can use. Okay, absolutely. And that can really give the transformation that we really need. Absolutely. So, Vidya, um, you are a leader. You've been a lead in an, in a leadership position for more than fifteen years. What? Uh, how would you define your leadership uh, style as? Okay, an interesting question because I I think. Um, I would say I've adopted different leadership styles, uh, right? I would think I've been democratic, wanting okay. my team, you know, uh, to let. Uh, I do give space for my team to make some make decisions mm. and things like that. But you know, I would. I have been uh, impacted by the leadership style of my uh, boss from again uh, Indus. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Raj Swaminathan. Mm. He had a very very inspiring uh, leadership style. His style mm. was to inspire loyalty and commitment from people. A lot of oh, us stayed there with him till the time he was there mm -hmm. for 10, 15, 20 years in the organization. Wow. Mm. I think um, I've been, as in I would really like to see if I could really you know, follow his kind mm. of a leadership style. So he was your mentor as well, so to speak? Yes. Nice, interesting. So. Um, as part of uh, my next uh, uh, question to you, I would also like to know what what would you consider as, as as something you should not do as a leader. The twist in the question is what no, would you I, say? No, I I think I, I completely. Um, I mean, it's a very important question if you ask mm. me, right? Uh, one of the things that, that really becomes uh, a problem for when someone moves from a, a lot more transactional role to a leadership role is mm. not being able to let go of, uh, you know, what 
uh, they have been doing and mm. right so i think i have been doing this job very well mm. and hence will want to go down the line and not give the freedom for my team to do their work in the way they uh, want to do it right okay. and be all over them to you know tell them this is the way you can you should you can be giving them direction but you mm. can't really uh, micromanage by saying that this is how you want this done because sometimes then you lose mm. the the parents child cycle as they would call right. it in psychology not, yeah correct mm. but that should not really happen in at, at least a professional setup is mm. how i see it as mm. um, i think that's something that you should let go of oh. and also there is a big difference between a manager and a leader right mm. you you will learn to manage a team but a leadership is something where people will have to look up to you and then um, encourage them to know where to you yeah. know and i think over a period i've also adopted more a coaching style of mm. leadership as well mm. people do come back to you if they see value in um, what you are able to give back to them right Absolutely. so i think that's something that has been uh, so a lot of things that you actually said all, uh, mentioned also gives me the feeling that it's a very trust based is role so there's a lot of uh, importance given to trust trusting your team uh, to you know very very important and i completely agree with you on that <laughs> In this episode, we covered with his journey from uh, a software engineering student to uh, now a CTO and a CIO of Dwara KGFS, and uh, everything that has happened in between. We also spoke about uh, how technology has leveraged over a period of time from being in a very nascent stage to now being more uh, people and community oriented in a lot of uh, aspects, and how much it has created a difference. Uh, for people at the grassroots level in the next segment we will be going into a little bit more detail about dwara kgfs about what it does what's happening currently and what's in store for future so stay tuned with us